我这个人呢，性情比较懒散，筋骨迟钝，皮肉松弛，头发和脸经常一个月、半个月不洗。如果不是身上发闷发痒，是绝不会洗澡的。小便也是，要憋到浑身颤抖，才愿意起身解决。These ridiculous sentences are from a famous breakup letter in China's history. It was written by Ji Kang, a core figure of the Seven Sages of the Bamboo Grove. The recipient of the letter is Shan Tao, the oldest member of the Seven Sages of the Bamboo Grove. You 曾经对你叔父说，嵇康这人呢，是不会愿意出世做官的。我视这为知己之言，可我最近倒是奇怪了，你是不是对我还是不够熟悉啊？我从河东回来，他们都对我说，你打算让我来接替你曾经的官职。此事最后虽未成功，却也算知道了。你以往，并非真正了解我。At the time, Shan Tao had been promoted and had recommended Ji Kang to fill his former official position. Instead of feeling grateful to Shan Tao, Ji Kang wrote a breakup letter to Shan Tao. The Wei and Jin dynasties, running from the 2nd century to the 5th century, saw the most freedom of thought in China's history. The Seven Sages of the Bamboo Grove were the best representatives of the period. The seven talented men enjoyed themselves in nature, drank alcohol, composed verses, and even streaked. What they did would be considered out of line even today. The initiators of the Seven Sages of the Bamboo Grove were Ji Kang and Shan Tao. Shan Tao was 20 years older than Ji Kang, yet he admired Ji Kang a lot. He extolled Ji Kang as majestically towering like a solitary pine tree. He told his wife that he had only two true friends, one of whom was Ji Kang. These words came as a huge blow to Shan Tao. Their more than ten years friendship came to an end. Shan Tao was a gentle man. He was the leading light of the seven sages of the bamboo grove.
According to the Book of Jean, he worked as an official in the Ministry of Personnel twice, and he was impartial. The men he selected and recommended were all capable, except one person. Shantou was strongly against appointing the person as an official, but the imperial court insisted. Later, this man was removed from office for taking bribes. On the contrary, Ji Kang was unrestrained and shrugged off proprieties. He was handsome and learned, but he didn't like taking baths. As a result, there were fleas all over his body. He had one unusual hobby, forging iron. Ji Kong compared his longing for freedom to a deer. But could the seven sages of the bamboo grove get away from the secular world and find freedom? In 254, 14-year-old Cao Mao, Cao Cao's great-grandson, became the emperor. But the power of the state was already controlled by the Si Ma clan, who were awaiting an opportunity to usurp the throne. Everyone knew of their reckless ambition. Because of the contention for power, the Cao clan and the Xi Ma clan were at daggers drawn. Caught between the two sides, many officials were having a bad time. Some of them chose to withdraw from officialdom and to live in solitude. The seven sages of the bamboo grove were the most famous of them. When he was 40 years old, Shan Tao betrayed the ideal of the circle and became an official. Shan Tao's father was the cousin of Si Ma Yi's wife. Si Ma Yi was once the regent of the state of Wei during the Three Kingdoms period. So Shan Tao was the cousin of Si Ma Yi's two sons, Si Ma Chu and Si Ma Chao. The powerful Si Ma Chu appreciated Shan Tao and compared him to Zhang Ziya, the advisor who helped establish the Zhou dynasty. Shan Tao had no other choice but to serve as an official. Ji Kung, however, was in an embarrassing position. Ji Kong's wife was Tao Tao's great granddaughter, so he was naturally considered to be a supporter of the Tao clan. Though the Xi Ma clan tried to win him over, they didn't really trust him. So, I heard you were a young man, and I was very excited. I was afraid you wouldn't be able to read the book, but you would have to take me as a judge. Just like the judge did, the judge did one person, and he would have to take a judge to help me. Ji Kang wrote the letter to Shan Tao so as to show the people where he stood. Everyone knew that the powerful Su Ma clan would usurp the throne sooner or later. Ji Kang offended the Su Ma clan, and his wife was a member of the Tao clan so he was in danger of losing his life. Ji Kang knew that Shan Tao was trying to save his life by offering him an official position. But Ji Kang was not afraid of death at all. He chose to break with Shan Tao in order to secure Shan Tao's future. Shan Ye Zhong Ren 晒太阳是最快乐的事，吃芹菜是最惬意的享受。但如果把这些东西献给君王，即便有全权之心，也像个笑话。
，希望你不要像他们那样。写这封信，既是为了跟你把事情说清楚，也是向你告别。Less than one year after he wrote the letter, the Sumac clan sentenced Ji Kong to death on a trumped-up charge. In prison, he entrusted his son and daughter to Shan Tao. He told his children that they would never be lonely as long as Shan Tao was there. He played the Guangling melody and then was executed. After Ji Kong's death, Shan Tao treated Ji Kong's children as his own, helping one's friend to achieve what he wants at the moment of death shows the highest level of friendship. There is a kind of friend in whom you can see yourself. More than 1,000 years ago in the Tang Dynasty, there were two friends like this. Wager, wager, 分别已三载，收不到你的心两年。人生才多少时日，你我竟要这样蹉跎。你我一心，却分别两地，进不能相合，退不能相望，千山阻隔，眼看就要老了。未知，怎么办？天意如此，可怎么办 ？In 817, Bai Ju Yi, who had been demoted to a post in Jiangzhou three years previously. Wrote this letter to his friend Yuan Jian, who had suffered a similar fate. Yuan Jian was demoted to a post in Tongzhou, Sichuan. By then, they had known each other for 15 years. In 802, 31-year-old Bai Ju Yi. And 24-year-old Yuan Jian got to know each other in the capital city of Chang'an. Both of them were here to sit an examination held by the Ministry of Personnel. In the following year, both of them passed the exam. They worked as editors at the Royal Library. In four years, the two exemplary students discovered something. They were like another self to each other. Both of them love poems, especially the ones written by Du Fu. They loved the realism expressed in his poems. They wanted to be good officials who could benefit the people. In China's history of literature, Yuan Jian and Bai Ju Yi were collectively known as Yuan Bai. Their biggest contribution was that they were pioneers in the field of literature. Starting the poetry reform and innovation movement, known as New UFU. 做教书郎的那些年，诗作足足有三四百首，拿出来给你看。说我虽写的工巧，却不够有作者气质。入朝为官以来，年龄渐长，经历的事情也越来越多。每每与人聊天，都在操心正事时局。次次看书读史，都想探求治国之道。这才明白，文章何谓时而著，歌诗何谓事而作。In 806, their editorial postings expired. Both of them chose to take the exam aimed at selecting special talents. They passed the exam and entered officialdom. As a novice in officialdom, Yuan Jian impeached bigwigs seven times within several months. 
Similarly, Bai Juyi denounced the Prime Minister and reported governors of border provinces. The collection of the new UFU poems, compiled by the two, became popular among the people as the poems reflected the sufferings of the people and the social ills. It caused quite a stir in the imperial court. Wait, 但在二战中,UN-Gen受到了一些挫折 and Yuan Jin Tongzhou. In hot and humid Sichuan, Yuan Jin was infected with malaria, almost losing his life. The two men were thousands of miles apart so they could only use poems to vent their anger and to comfort each other. The two of them wrote more than 900 poems to each other, much more than the number of poems they wrote to their families. One day, Yuan Jen came back home in tears. Seeing this, his family were deeply worried, and they thought the political situation had changed again. Later, they got to know that Yuan Jin had just received a letter from Bai Juyi. The letters from one another were the spiritual support they couldn't do without. Yuan Jin and Bai Ju Yi met for the last time in Luo Yang. At that time, Yuan Jin was on his way to the capital where he would work as an official. He paid a visit to Bai Ju Yi, who had quit his job and lived in Luo Yang. Yuan Jen was 44 years old that year and Bai Ju Yi 51. Not long after, Bai Ju Yi got the bad news that Yuan Jen had died of an acute disease. He was so sad he wrote an elegy to mourn the death of Yuan Jen. <laughs> They supported each other over the course of two decades. For Bai Ju Yi, losing Yuan Zhen was like losing himself. 
eight years after Yuan Zhen's death, Bai Juyi wrote a poem that would be passed down through the ages. You buried under the earth with mud eroding your bones. I living in the mortal world with my hair white as snow. There's another kind of friendship. Two men could still be friends despite their different political stances. For example, Wang Anshu and Xu Ma Guang, both are high-ranking officials of the Song Dynasty. In 1067, Emperor Shenzong of the Song Dynasty succeeded to the throne. Seeing the poor and weak country, the young emperor reinstated Wang Anxi to launch a major series of reforms. The reform measures were radical and of unprecedented scope. As a result, the reforms were acutely controversial and strongly opposed by many. His old friend, Su Ma Guang, was a leading figure in the opposing faction. Soon, the two were in deadlock. Su Ma Guang wrote to Wang Anxi, trying to persuade him to abandon the reform measures. But Wang didn't reply, because he knew himself and Su Ma Guang too well. He knew that he wouldn't change his ideas, and he knew that Su Ma Guang wouldn't be persuaded. It was only when he had received three letters from Su Ma Guang that he replied. <laughs> Su Ma Guang was two years older than Wang Anxi. Both of them passed the highest imperial examination at the age of 21. Before Emperor Shenzong ascended the throne, both of them worked as officials and they were good friends. Though both of them were learned, they had different characters. Wang Anxi was stubborn and radical, while Xi Ma Guang was stable and sophisticated. Both of them supported reform, but their methods and ideas were different. The reform started, and Xi Ma Guang adopted a wait-and-see attitude. Over the course of the following year, his attitude changed. The reform measures were so radical that they would lead to serious problems in the imperial court. He started to speak out against the reform. Wang Anxi wrote him a letter to explain his opinions. I accepted the the Shishinglitaishinjindajungso, 至于对我的诸多诽谤和怨恨，我早就料到了。Wang Anxi and Xi Ma Guang held utterly different political opinions. They even debated in the imperial court. 
Emperor Shenzong, who wanted to make a difference, supported Wang Anxi, so Sima Guang chose to quit his job. Woyuni 是尽朋友的道义，舍弃还是采纳，全在你了。Sima Guang lived in Luoyang, far away from the imperial court. He started to compose the Comprehensive Mirror in Aid of Governance, which would take him 15 years. 人们习惯于苟且偷安，得过且过。已不是一两天了。Five years into the reform, a rare drought happened, and the people were thrown into great misery. The ministers submitted memorials to the throne to criticize Wang Anxi, and the Empress Dowager tearfully complained to the emperor about the reform. The radical reform couldn't go on anymore. That autumn, Wang Anxi was removed from his post, and the reform failed. Sixty-seven-year-old Xi Ma Guang was reinstated and put in an important position. Ten years later, Wang Anxi died in depression. Some people defamed him, but Xi Ma Guang stopped them. In his heart, Wang Anxi was an upright and respectable man. As men of noble character, they coexisted in harmony, in spite of their different opinions. Their relationship was the same as what Wang Anxi had written about in the letter. Taipei's Palace Museum houses the memorials with replies from the Qing Dynasty Emperor Kang Shi. The most frequent sentence is, got it. One of them is special, as there's a red flower beside it. Standing behind the red flower is the friendship between the emperor and his childhood friend. 得疥疮的时候,不适合吃药。these warm sentences are from the secret letter from Emperor Kang Shi to his childhood friend Tao Yin. Tao Yin was the grandfather of Tao Shu Jin, author of Dream of the Red Chamber. At the time, Tao Yin was the commissioner of imperial textiles in Jiangnin. He was also in charge of the salt administration in the region south and north of the Huai He River. In the Qing dynasty, the children of the royal family left their mothers as soon as they were born, 
and they were taken care of by nannies. Some children were even closer to their nannies than to their mothers. Tao In's mother was one of Emperor Kang Shi's nannies. The emperor and Tao In were childhood friends. Tao In was smart and diligent. He was the emperor's study companion and bodyguard when he was young. Emperors were at the summit of power. There were few people they could trust, and they had few friends. Tao In was both the emperor's friend and confidant. When he was 32, he was appointed commissioner of the imperial textiles in Suzhou. Two years later, he was appointed as commissioner of the imperial textiles in Jianning. This is Emperor Kang Shi's reply to Tao Yin. It shows another side of the emperor. After Tao Yin became commissioner of the imperial textiles in Jianning, he and the emperor communicated via secret memorials. When the emperor was in a good mood, he would draw a red flower beside Got It. This was a bonus for Tao Yin. Jianning is today's Nanjing. During the reign of Emperor Kang Shi, there were three imperial textile bureaus in Jianning, Suzhou, and Hangzhou, headed by the one in Jianning. They provided silk for the royal family. Set up by the Imperial Household Department, they kept watch on the officials in the region south of the Yangtze River. The importance of this position shows Emperor Kang Shi's trust in Tao Yin. Emperor Kangxi made six inspection trips to the south. He stayed in Tao Yin's home four times. In a career spanning over 30 years, Tao Yin always held important positions. He was in charge of silk and salt, supervised monetary production, escorted relief grain, and took charge of the construction of imperial palaces for short stays away from the capital. All these matters were highly important as far as the country was concerned. Nidazo 你们一定要小心万主,万主,万主。When Emperor Kang Shi was 59 years old, Tao Yin caught a cold, and then it deteriorated into malaria. His brother-in-law, Li Xu, sent a secret memorial to the emperor, telling him about the illness of Tao Yin. After reading it, the emperor became deeply worried. He immediately ordered that the letter and medicine be sent to Tao Yin, but Tao died before he got the medicine. Because of his friendship with Tao Yin, the emperor gave Tao Yin's descendants special treatments after Tao's death. He ordered Tao Yin's son, Tao Yong, to take over his father's post. One and a half years later, Tao Yong suddenly died. The emperor ordered Tao Fu, Tao Yin's nephew, to be Tao Yin's adopted son and asked him to take over the post. 
In a reply to the young man, the emperor wrote lines like these. Nisuran 写信告诉朕。这其中的事是非非呀，朕自有判断。哪怕讲个笑话，让你的老主子高兴一下也好啊。After losing his friend, the emperor became lonely. When he reviewed the memorials, he must have had an impulse to draw a red flower beside Got It. But his only childhood friend was gone, and no one would appreciate his red flower anymore. Fifteen hundred kilometers is not, in fact, such a long distance. And one man never forgot his promise, not even after 20 years, showing that friendship transcends space and time. This letter was from Gu Zhen Guan to his friend Wu Jiao Qian, who was living more than 1,000 kilometers away. While one of them was anxious in Beijing, the other was struggling to survive in Ningu Ta in Heilongjiang. Neither of them knew whether they would have a chance to meet again. Gu Zheng Guan was born in Wuxi, Jiangsu. When he was young, he joined the famous literature society initiated by Wu Jiao Qian, who was from Wujiang. Wu was six years older than Gu, and they had different characters. Gu Zheng Guan was modest and polite, while Wu Jiao Qian was obstinate and unrestrained. They appreciated each other and became close friends. No one expected that their life would change because of a case that shocked the whole country. In 1657, Wu Jiao Qian passed the provincial examination. Just as he was about to realize his ambition, the examination results were announced. When the list of successful candidates was published, some examinees thought the result was unfair, and they said the examiners took bribes and even allowed examinees to leaf through each other's papers. Cheating in examinations has been regarded as egregious behavior in all ages. Emperor Shun Ji of the Qing Dynasty was infuriated and ordered to investigate the matter. It turned out that some examiners had indeed taken bribes. This appalling case shocked the whole country. The following year, the imperial court held a re-examination in Beijing, and each examinee was watched by two guards armed with blades. The young and proud 
Wu Jiao Chen thought this was unfair on the innocent examinees, so he handed in a blank examination paper. What he never could have expected is the heavy price he would pay for this protest. Emperor Shunji ruled on the case. The property of Wu Jiaoqian's family was confiscated, and Wu was exiled to Ningu Ta, Heilongjiang. There he would stay for 23 years. Back then, being exiled to Ningu Ta was pretty much the same as being sentenced to death. Many exiles died before they reached the place. Even if they managed to get there, they couldn't survive the extreme cold. Gu Zhen Guan promised Wu Jiao Chen that he would help him come back. Gu Zheng Guan never forgot his promise. But this case was settled by Emperor Shun Ji himself, so no one dared question it. Three years later, Emperor Kang Shi ascended the throne showing he had no intention of redressing it. Gu Zhen Guan passed the provincial examination in 1666 and later became a low-ranking official. He tried to get some help from the powerful officials. Some people who used to be Wu Jiao Qian's friends now held important posts. Gu visited them one by one but only to find none of them wanted to infuriate the emperor because of the case. People were cold and indifferent. This was a fact that was hard to change. In 1676, Gu Zhen Guan was 39, while Wu Jiao Qian was 45. After spending 18 grueling years in Ningu Ta, Wu Jiao Qian lost the hope of returning to his hometown. Events took a favorable turn that year. Gu Zhen Guan was recommended to a teaching position in the home of Na Lan Ming Chu, a powerful official. The Natlan clan was connected with the royal family by blood. All of a sudden, Gu Zhen Guan saw hope. He then became a good friend of Natlan Xing Du, Natlan Ming Chu's eldest son. This young nobleman read the letter from Gu Zhen Guan to Wu Jiao Chen and became touched by the friendship between them. He promised to Gu Zhen Guan that he would get Wu Jiao Chen out of that place in 10 years. He knew this was not a small thing, and he didn't dare to act unadvisedly.
life is short. Gu Zhenguan hoped Na Lan Xing Du could do it in five years. Na Lan Xing Du promised he would turn to his father for help and try to send a memorial to the emperor. You were born in the sin and Nihuato 满腹的话语说不尽，我在此向你磕头行礼了。Thanks to Thanks to the efforts by Na Lan Xing Du and his father, Emperor Kang Shi read the poems Wu Jiao Qian wrote in the border area, and he liked the poems a lot. So in 1681, 50-year-old Wu Jiao Qian returned alive. Wu Jiao Qian went to the Na Lan's house to thank them and found an inscription on a wall. It reads, the place where Gu Zhen Guan kneeled in order to save Wu Jiao Qian. At the moment, he realized how hard Gu Zhen Guan had tried in order to get him out of that place. None of the inmates of Wu Jiao Qian managed to return to their hometown. Life is short. Who would be willing to spend 20 years waiting for the return of a friend? Even long distances can't get in the way of friendship. Even different ambitions and different goals in life can't get in the way of mutual appreciation. Not even the biggest obstacles can prevent a warm welcome. Life is long. A true friend makes life worthwhile.